This video will discuss fugacity in chemical thermodynamics. All right, so we're going to look at the standard Gibbs energy for a given temperature. So that's equal to the molar Gibbs energy at that given temperature and the standard pressure. So the standard pressure is defined to be one bar and the standard state is for some hypothetical ideal gas. So that is also equal to the Gibbs energy of that temperature and standard pressure divided by the number of moles to give us the molar Gibbs energy and the standard state, which is the standard Gibbs energy. All right, from previous videos, we saw that our change in Gibbs energy during a small perturbation to the state of the system, dg, is equal to minus entropy times the change in temperature, dt, plus the volume times the change in pressure, dp. We also saw from this uh, type of expression that the Gibbs energy is a function of temperature and pressure. So it's partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to the negative molar entropy. And the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to the molar volume of the system. All right, we've defined our compressibility factor for gases, Z, is equal to P times V bar over RT. Remember for ideal gases, PV equals NRT or PV bar equals RT. So for ideal gases, pressure times molar volume over gas constant times temperature equals one. For non-ideal gases, we consider, uh, we continue this expansion as a Taylor series in pressure of the virial coefficients. So we have the second virial coefficient B2P times pressure, plus the third virial coefficient B3P times pressure squared, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For gases at low pressure, uh, the behavior is pretty much ideal because P and P squared become very low, and then usually only the second virial coefficient matters, and if you get it low enough, even that one doesn't matter as well. Okay, so, and note that these virial coefficients, they depend only on temperature. All right, so our molar volume of our gas then, so if we take this equation, we multiply both sides by RT over P, we get a series in terms of V bar. The molar volume of a non-ideal gas is gonna be RT over P, the molar volume of an ideal gas, plus RT, second virial coefficient, plus RT, third virial coefficient times P, plus etc. etc. on and on you go. So our molar Gibbs energy at a given temperature and pressure is equal to the molar Gibbs energy at that temperature and a pressure which is sufficiently close to zero such that our gas behaves ideally, plus the integral from approximately zero up to that pressure of our change in our molar Gibbs energy. All right, so what we're looking at here is uh, for ideal and then non-ideal gases, uh, what is gonna be our molar Gibbs energy as a function of pressure. All right, so that integral as we go from a very low pressure where the gas behaves ideally, which is very close to zero, but not exactly zero. Integral from almost zero to P of dg bar is equal to, well, we have that same integral. dg bar is gonna be minus s bar dt plus v bar dp. So substitute that in. We're gonna say that this is at a constant temperature. So we're not gonna have our temperature of our gas change during this process, so that's gonna to go to zero. So that's going to be the integral from almost zero to P of V bar dP. So substituting on our expression for the molar volume of a non-ideal gas, we have the integral from zero to P of RT over P plus RT plus the second virial coefficient plus RT, B, uh, RT the third virial coefficient plus P, et cetera, et cetera, for higher order coefficients all integrated with respect to P. So if you carry out this integral, what we're gonna get is RT log P over P approximately zero, 
plus RT second variable coefficient times P plus one half RT third variable coefficient times P squared, et cetera, et cetera, on and on you go. All right, so the molar volume of the molar Gibbs energy at a given temperature and pressure is the molar Gibbs energy at, a pro at that temperature and approximately zero pressure plus RT log the pressure over the very low pressure, et cetera, et cetera, as the terms go on. The Gibbs energy at that temperature and approximately zero is going to be equal to the standard state Gibbs energy, which is the Gibbs energy of an ideal gas at that temperature and pressure, plus RT log very low pressure over standard pressure. This is an expression from one of our previous videos. So for an ideal gas, the Gibbs energy of an ideal gas is going to be the standard Gibbs energy plus RT log P over the standard P, standard P being an ideal gas at one bar. All right, so if we take some of these expressions, combine them together, we get RT log P over P low plus RT log P low over P naught is equal to uh, the so x log a plus x log b is x log a times b. So this is equal to rt log p over p low times p low over p naught. So what we have here is our Gibbs energy, our molar Gibbs energy at a given temperature and pressure for a non-ideal gas is equal to the standard Gibbs energy, which is an ideal gas at that same temperature and pressure plus RT log P over P naught. So the, Gibbs, the standard Gibbs energy is taken to be at that standard uh, pressure of one bar. If I can put that in there, I'll put in the circle up there just so we remind ourselves. So we get that plus then all of these extra terms that we have after that, which are due to all the virial coefficients. So RT times the quantity second virial coefficient times pressure plus one half third virial coefficient times pressure squared, plus et cetera, et cetera, as far as you want to go, accounting for all that non-ideal behavior. If our virial coefficients are all zero, as they are for an ideal gas, we just get this, and our gas is equivalent to the ideal gas behavior. All right, so this is a nice clean expression uh, for the ideal gas. We get the, we get just the standard, uh, the standard Gibbs energy plus RT log P over P naught. That's a nice clean expression. It doesn't have all this extra uh, baggage hanging off of the end. So what we want is to define a quantity for a non-ideal gas, which allows us to have a clean expression similarly to what ideal gases have. So that quantity is going to be called the fugacity of the gas. Fugacity is a function of pressure and temperature. And in the limit, as the pressure goes to zero, the fugacity and the pressure become the same value as th the gas becomes more ideal. So the standard fugacity we're going to define as the standard pressure, which is going to be defined as one bar of pressure. So the fugacity from this type of expression here is going to be defined as the pressure times the exponential of second virial coefficient times pressure plus one half third virial coefficient times pressure squared etc etc as far as you want to carry out the virial expansion. So once you substitute in this expression for fugacity into our expression there what you're going to find is now our molar Gibbs energy of a non-ideal gas is going to equal our standard Gibbs energy at that standard pressure of an ideal gas plus RT log fugacity over standard fugacity. So now we know what our Gibbs energy is for a given temperature and a given pressure using this quantity called the fugacity of the gas, which is a measure of how the ideal behavior of a gas deviates away from, the, the, how the non-ideal behavior of a gas deviates away from ideal behavior. And the closer the fugacity is to the pressure, the more ideally the gas is behaving.